Like a lifetime of knowledge, bruh. We're very dark today. <sighs>everyone welcome back to foster the meeple a channel all about board games and snacks exactly we're here today with another board game wrap up now give me that drink here's a few give things give me that drink please wait there's a few things i'd like to address before you can have your soda pop okay yeah number one i haven't prepared for this video at all why there's so many reasons i was dying sick very sick for a very long time. Jeff thought he was sick. We've been super busy because we're prepping to go to Disney. We had an unfortunate thing happen where our dog passed away and that was very sad and hard and we've been taking some time to process it. Mm -hmm. um, and so I haven't prepared for this video and what we're just going to do is we're going to talk about a couple games that we played and have some snacks from Munch Pack because you know what makes you feel better? eating give me that drink all right give jeffrey me that drink now for anybody who doesn't know what munch pack is do not drink this until i tell people what it is for anyone that doesn't know what munch pack is it is a snack subscription box snacks from around the world delivered to your door and this video is actually sponsored by munch pack so we thank them so much because we are going to talk about some board games today we're going to eat some snacks and jeff is going to start off with the pop now there are many different boxes that you can get excuse you this is the family pack but there's also a regular size and like a mini size uh and this one does have the soda added to it so it's, it's my not part. it's not standard with it just so you know it's my favorite part this by far. is the family pack it's not this. that smells like pure sugar so let's see where that came from that is a suntory pop blue cider it's from japan a refreshing ramoon flavored carbonated cider that's a staple in coffee shops around Japan, featuring a bright blue hue that brings us back to sweet snow cones on hot summer days. What? What is it? I don't know. What does it taste like? I, I'd have a drink of it. That is bizarre. I don't know what it tastes like. I thought it would taste like blue raspberry. It tastes just like creamy. I don't know anything to compare that to. What is Ramoon? I gotta take a picture for Josh because he's from Japan. All right, Jeff, you enjoy your pop, okay? So that is the soda that came in the munch pack this month. Now, where did my phone go? Oh yeah, here it I is. just don't know how to describe this. It's Ramoon. These are not complete stats because I don't have Jeff's BGA plays, but you haven't been playing a ton ton. A tin tin, a rin tin tin. No, not as much as I usually do. Not as much as he usually does. You've so, been you've been hindering a lot of my games, to be fair. What? You haven't been taking your turns. Yes, I do. Like one a day. I take usually two a day. Mm. Sometimes three. Also, Max has been just slow as molasses, man. Slow as molasses. Oh. Okay, here are the stats. We, once again, incomplete. Like the Backstreet Boys song. We have played 52 different games. 91 different plays. That's way better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, but that includes my BGA. We have played 16 games of Lorcana, just uh, so you know. So that is a heavy portion. Yeah. And we are uh, guesstimating it's probably a few more. I think there's yeah. a couple that we didn't count. Yeah, we've been playing a lot of Lorcana. We've been playing a heck and ton of Lorcana, okay? Yep. We, we did a whole video about it, so if you're interested in learning more about what we think about it, you can watch that video. No regrets. That's a problem solved right there. Yeah. No regrets. No regrets. Are we going to Disney in a couple of days? Yes. Are they selling Lorcana packs at the park? Hopefully. Yes. If we see them, will we buy them? Yes. yes. Stop asking such silly questions. Are we going to bring cards down to get signed? Yes. We're going to bring our common cards down to get signed by characters if we see them. Okay. Jeff, let's talk about Will a they sign something that small? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So here's a funny thing. Gen Con happened in August. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? We didn't really play a ton of games at Gen Con. No. So, um, and we already talked about a, a few of them at least, if not all of them-ish, in our Gen Con wrap-up. Yeah. But one that I do just want to highlight quickly is Inside Job. It was the star of Gen Con. I think it's a game Was that, it? 
for over me, Nana. Oh well, for sorry, it was a star of Gen Con for us. It's the game B. that we pulled out yeah. to play with everybody, and I do think this is a game that I would just naturally bring to cons from now on. It's kind of like a hidden traitor trick taking game, mm -hmm. and it is so good. We haven't even played with the uh, asymmetrical uh, agents. And no, stuff. and we haven't played the. I have the hiccups. We haven't played the two-player version. Yeah, it's tough because like every time we pulled it out, we were teaching a new group. So mm -hmm. yeah, we haven't got to explore it a ton, but yeah, it's so good. So, so good. There's a couple of solo games that I want to talk about, but I also did want to give a quick shout to Gap from Arcane mm -hmm. Wonders. Uh, I which very was, much like Gap. I would say, probably the biggest surprise of the month, I didn't, honestly. I didn't even know it existed. We didn't even know it existed. Until we went there. And I was walking by the Arcane Wonders booth, and Brie, who works with Arcane Wonders, was like, would you like a demo? And I was like, heck yeah, Brie, I'll take a demo. And we played it, and I was like, this is so good. Yeah, it's so, so good. good. And she, she gifted us with a copy, which was amazing, and... I'm taking it with us to Disney it's because very good, yeah, very very good. And the cards are so beautiful. Yeah. For just a, a a game that just is cards with numbers on it, the production is insane. So good. Yeah. There's two just little solo games that I played. Um, one is called Songbirds, and shout out to Tim from the Discord who found me this copy. And it's it a good is good guy, Tim. Man, good guy, Tim. Basically, Tim, Tim's a ten. Tim's, Tim's a, 10. a 10. Basically, in this game, you are trying to collect, it's like a set collection almost of birds, but you have end up having a favorite color bird. And so you are trying to get the most of that color bird in each row and column and trying to outscore the other colors of birds. I played it like six times while I was waiting for Jeff because we were on separate flights from Gen Con. Mm. Very, very good. Uh, you can play it multiplayer. We yeah. haven't, but I played it solo. And Mr. Cabbage Head's Garden, which is just the weirdest game. I didn't know you played that. I did. I played it at the airport when mm. I was waiting for you. It's so much fun. I played it three times in a row. And essentially, like, you're kind of building up this garden, but then different members of the community are coming into your garden and they're messing with it because they're jerks <laughs> gotcha. and so like you're putting this stuff out and you're trying to just maximize your points the artwork is the weirdest artwork of all the artwork it is very weird. and i was so excited that i found a copy played it loved it loved it do you want a snack toy yeah snack toy mint toy these are Costlin Salta's cheese and paprika pretzel sticks from Croatia. From Croatia? Croatia. Oh, this is the first time we've had a snack from Croatia. Salted pretzel sticks filled with smoky cheese and combined with the sweet and peppery taste of paprika seasoning. I don't know how I feel with the cheese filling. Oh, there's cheese in it? Yeah. Ooh. Apparently. Tastes like a pretzel. Tastes like a pretzel. Tastes like... <laughs> What's at the end? It's the paprika. She kicks back. It's not spicy. No, it's spice. E, because it's got spice on it. I think that it would... Um, it needs some dip or something. Ranch. I was say, a little ranch. Yeah. Not bad, though. Yeah. Yeah, a good yeah. little party snack. Yeah, pretty good. Croatia. Next up... We played Mythic Mischief Volume 1 and 2 mm. for the first time this month. Mm -hmm. We do have a preview coming out on Mythic Mischief Volume 2 later this month. However, it was our first time playing it. I didn't really know what to expect. Yeah. But it's an abstract game where you are playing like different groups of like teenagers or kids in a monster-esque school. In Volume 1, it's a school. In Volume 1, it's a school. Volume 2, it's like a hedge maze. and Library. Not school, library. Library in a school. Yeah. And you're basically just trying to get your opponent caught by the tomes keeper in volume one or the groundskeeper in volume two Correct. by like doing different moves and putting them in the path because the asymmetrical factions. Asymmetrical factions. It's like it's super abstract, but also filled with theme. Yeah, it's it plays like an abstract in terms of like it's just super kind of like chess like and, mm -hmm. and puzzly. Uh, but it, it, it does have some really awesome miniatures, uh, and the, the theme is, is prevalent through the through the board, the mm -hmm. characters, the theme. The the theme is prevalent through the theme. The, uh, 
the like hedges and stuff that you're putting out or the the shelves on the board. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's very chess. It was an unexpected hit. Very mm. sim simplistic rules wise, but extremely brain burny. Yeah. Like very AP inducing, and it's beautiful. It is beautiful, and there's a ton of optimization of your turns in that game. Like, cause yeah. you have multiple actions on your turn, and they all cost uh, things to do them. And it's all about maximizing every single turn so that you're plopping uh, the other person's characters in the path of the Groundskeeper mm -hmm. or Tombskeeper, depending on the version. Yeah, so stay tuned for our preview, which, by the way, is obviously paid. However, right now our opinions are obviously our own. Correct. Correct. Um, but both of these games were sent to us from mm -hmm. the publisher. I do FYI. think, I uh, haven't played Veiled Fate yet. Um, but mm -hmm. I think Mythic Mischief is my favorite Ivy Studios game right now. Oh, me too, for yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. By, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Um, the next one that I'd like for you to talk about quickly is Fancy Feathers. Yes. I got, I was like, Fancy Feathers. I got a chance Freeman to. Freeze. I got the chance to play Fancy Feathers with Nick Murphy uh, from the Brothers Mirth. Go check the, the Mother's Birth. Uh, the Brothers go, Murph. Go check them out on uh Instagram, Instagram, Twitter, Twitter, wherever you want. MySpace. They're incredible human beings. And we're going to see Nick at Disney. And I'm super excited to spend some time with him. But I got to play Fancy Feathers at Gen Con with him. Fancy Feathers is a Freedman Freeze game where you are Peacocks. basically, it's set collection with a conveyor belt type system. So you are going to be basically taking cards to add to your set collection, um, placing out a token um, in order to do so. And depending on the next person where they place that token, you might have to take all the cards behind your token. Behind. And you might not want all of them. Um, some of, because some kind of, of them like are like- a little bit? A little bit like Parade, yes, mm -hmm. correct. But a little bit more smooth and, and quick, mm -hmm. uh, unlike Parade, which can be a little bit of a brain burning mess. But there's like right. bad cards that are negative points if you have a certain amount of them. There's like certain uh, pheasants that like, you want three of them, but not four, because then the four is negative, that kind of set collection, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, and there's like pheasant fart cards, <laughs> which is amazing. So silly. Um, it's just a really silly card game that um, I think would play better um, at more than two, mm -hmm. but it was enjoyable. We had a really good time with it, and uh, I definitely want to add it to the Freeman Freeze collection. That we Hundo have. percent. Uh, we also both individually and together have been playing a lot of Arc Nova on BGA. Yeah. I'm falling back in love with that game. I'd like to get it physically back know, to the table. It's, so... it's just so much setup, but yeah. I just wanted to yeah. give a shout out to that. Let's have a quick sneaky snack and then we'll talk about some. I picked else. the last one. Mm. This one might be something you want to try. What? It is the end of the say so, so that's not super exciting. Pears, snacks, peanut butter cup peanuts. Cocoa covered peanuts and creamy peanut butter flavored peanuts come together in one bag to make one deliciously magical snack. This is one nutty mashup you don't want to miss. It's nuts? Yep. <gasps> Interesting. Where's it from? The United States, United States. of America? Yep. Is there any other? No. What is so it? full of flavor, it's nuts. Freaking nuts. Nutty mashups. <laughs> This is the most obnoxious packaging on the planet. Better be good. I got all brown ones. Are they all brown? No. Most of them are. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is amazing! I want a peanut butter one. All of mine are chocolate. This tape. Oh. I think they're all the same, Ding Dong. Oh, this tastes like Reese's Peanut Butter Puffs as peanuts. This is one of the best snacks we've had in this thing. Peanut Butter Cup Peanuts. Do you know what this is up there? This is up there with the hard bite tips. Mm. Mm. Those are freaking good, man. This is a hard recommend for yeah. me. Mmm, protein. Yep. And probably no sugar. No, none. Bottom of the ninth. Bottom of the ninth is a two player only. No, sorry. It's a one to two player game mm -hmm. where one person's playing as the batter, one person is playing as a. I think it's one to two player. 
Can you play it the is. solo? Yes, you can. There's a solo. Uh, one person is playing as a batter. One person is playing as the pitcher. You are drafting out your team. So the batter is going to be have all the... And it's all like old-timey, like, baseball card-y mm -hmm. artwork. Like, think, like, baseball cards that used to get in, like, gum packs. Like, back when, like, my parents were kids. So it's, like, 50s and 60s, like, gum, mm. gum pack card type theming. Um, so the batter is going to basically draft out their characters to, and each character has different stats that you do. Same as the pitchers, you're going to draft your your pitchers and and place them out. So your pitchers are picking a starter and a reliever. And in this game, all all you're trying to do, you're in the bottom of the ninth. The batter need, has to win by <clears throat> scoring a run, mm -hmm. and the uh, pitchers win if they get three outs. Mm -hmm. That's a really unique play method in terms of like how you reveal what you're going to do so you have a deck of your batters as an example and you put them in order based on who you want to hit first and last when it's that batter's turn you reveal and they have different lists of like what they're good at like what these different combos mean and how you're doing it is you each have two chips we'll say high on one side low on the other inside and then outside you have to choose which side of those chips and then you guys re you re reveal them at the same time mm -hmm. and basically like some of them are going to cancel out so as an example if like jeff pitches high and outside and i picked high and outside it's like a perfect match or something and then i would you get, get Bonuses. Hit. You get a bonus. So after you get a hit, what's really cool is then you basically both have to start rolling dice. And depending on the first person to get a six is basically either out or safe. Mm -hmm. So if Jamie is hitting and she's rolling the dice trying to get to first and rolls a six, but some characters are fast runners. So maybe you need to roll a four, five, or six to get safe. And you're both just frantically rolling dice trying to get the outcome you need and either to throw out the runner or for the runner to be safe mm -hmm. after you get a hit. There's also like you can hit home runs, you can hit doubles. Like there's all, it's basically baseball. Um, it's so fun. Mm -hmm. uh, it plays so quick and it really, I've not played anything like it. Yeah, it's super, super fun. Even if you don't like baseball. Oh, I want to talk about a game that I've been playing a lot on BGA called Dracula versus Van Helsing, which is now a game that I so desperately want to own. It's the same people that made, it's the same artist from the Bloody Inn, and I can't remember if it's the same designers, but anyways, it's a trick-taking game in a way where you also have like a board with different people on it. Dracula is trying to kill four people, turn them into vampires. Van Helsing is trying to kill Dracula. And basically like you're playing out different cards, but you're playing them face down. At the end of the round, there's a bunch of different mechanics, like you can switch cards, you have to reveal cards, you can ditch cards, all of these things, and there's trump suits. At the end of the round, you both flip over your cards that are facing each other. So if I have this one and Jeff has one here, you flip them over, whoever wins it gets to resolve something. Mm. And you keep doing that until Dracula has either killed four people or if Van Helsing has killed Dracula. It is so much fun. It's on BGA. I am very excited to play it in person, but... Shout out to that new spooky, spooky game. I have not played it. No, you should play it though. We also played Inheritors from North Star mm. Games, which we will most likely be talking yeah. about in an upcoming snapshot. But just know that it's a small card game that we freaking loved. It was so, so uh, The good. thing I loved about it the most was just how snappy that game was. Mm -hmm. It was so quick. Yeah. And like quick, but like not quick wherein it felt like you weren't doing anything. Mm-mm. It just was like this perfect amount of speed of the game, but also just enough of depth of like strategy that it was, yeah. I, I man, talk about a game that shocked me. Same. I, I didn't know what to I knew expect. we would like it when we got demoed, mm -hmm. but I didn't think I'd like it that much. Yeah, it's yeah. very, very good. But we will cover that in an upcoming snapshot, so you stay tuned. Yeah. Then we played a butt ton of button shy games. Uh, which you love to see. We played a butt ton of Lorcana, and we most recently played Dragon Eclipse, which we also will have a preview for later in September. You'll see all those button shy games too. Yes, we did a whole button shy day, which we did film and we did a ranking at the end. We did. I think we played 14. We played 14 different ones. God, there was a couple bangers in there, man. Like a couple of those games mm -hmm. competing for being on my top list. 
You love to see it. Jeff is I, coming Jamie around. Jamie got me on the button chai train. Let's have... After numsters, mm -hmm. after numsters, squabbling goblins, mm -hmm. and then some of the ones that we played during that day. I want something sweet. There's the Oreo, which is just for your FYI. Oreo biscuit sandwich, ice cream blueberry. Yeah. We're going to have one more snack before we say our farewells. I, ha I have a feeling these are going to be a 10. Yeah, I can already tell. Where are they from again? Indonesia? Blueberry ice cream Oreos. Indonesia? Yeah. Blueberry ice cream Oreos. I want Oreos. Jeez, man. Talk oh, about. My. Can I smell it? <laughs> well, that one's squished. Squashed. I'll eat the squished one. Okay. They're so wet, huh? Oh, they are. I want you to tell me what that tastes like. Is it bad or good? Why would it taste minty? It has a weird flavor at the end. The first few bites taste, it could be mixing with this too. The first few bites taste of the, the, the strawberry wafer treats. Mm. It has a very artificial flavor. It's a little bit. It tasted really, really good. For some reason, and why then, it tastes like, like mint to me. I, I also feel like I have a mint like Yeah, it's like feeling a coolness. That must be the ice cream. Yeah. Well that was interesting. That was very bonkers. <laughs> that was a weird Oreo. Anyways, we're not gonna have any more snacks. We're gonna save some for streams. But if you're interested in Munch Pack, look at all of woo, look at all the freaking snacks we have to try. It's so exciting. All of the information will be in the description below along with a five dollar off coupon. Anyways, those are some of the games that we played this month. We would love to know in the comments below what is the best game that you played in this past month. Have you played any of that we played? Have you gotten into Lorcana like everybody else? If you have, we have a Discord channel dedicated to it. We do. Just so you know. But that is everything that we have for today. Now, if you're interested in buying board games like any of the many we mentioned today, you should first start by checking your friendly local gaming store. And for us, that is... The Boardroom Game Cafe. Heck yeah, it is. Do you like snacks? I do. Where do people go again? Munch Pack. Munch Pack. Snacks. From around the world. Delivered to your door. $5 off coupon. We'd love to see it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see... Please subscribe. We hope to see you again soon. And now we say goodbye. Goodbye. Later it is. Give me that drink. Give me that drink. Wait. I'm always going to go right towards the Oreos. That is oh on my face. And why did that decide to pop up right now when we filmed? That's called a stress <laughs> I'm here just in time. Am I late? I'm cutting it out, but it's Yikes. true, isn't it?